Hey, this is Cameron, and welcome to the practice log. All right, it's the morning, and uh, my voice is a little scratchy for some reason, and I'm tired, but man, we have a lot of work to do today. So, let's just go ahead and jump into it. Man, oh man, do I have some plans. Uh, first, I need to eat something. Ooh. Yeah, my life is a mess. Okay, here we go. Spilt Coke on the floor. Ugh! I need those empty Coke cans there, or else I can't function. This is a t-shirt. I've been using it as a rag. Oh my god. Admittedly, I have been neglecting a lot of things uh, in my life just to practice. Because I practice, like, you know, like quite a bit. I mean, filming these logs takes like three hours flat. So, you know, last time you heard the Adagio and Siciliana, go and watch that episode if you haven't. It was a good one, I think. We're mainly going to focus on the last two pages of the fugue. That's going to be my goal. Uh, we haven't watched the Julian Bream uh, BBC documentary in a while, so maybe we'll go into that. Uh, that'll be kind of fun. Uh, you know, and then we'll wrap it up with the uh, Adagio and Siciliana. And I uh, just try to add to that. I have a lot of time today, so I'm going to really try to sit in that chair for a while. And then I have like eight hours or 12 hours. I'm going to do a night session and try to practice like the same amount of time again. I have some cool pieces in the night session now. That Via Lobos, that's pretty fun. You haven't really heard it yet, but I think you'll hear it tonight. I really want to get into this. I'm excited <clears throat> to get into that last two pages. It's going to be fun. So close. Back to the reason why I do this. My hands are a little chilly. So I'm gonna warm them up with a fugue, probably play through the whole thing, uh, and then I will focus on pages three and four. So, I'll see you on the other side. I have been working mainly on the last two pages, so I'm gonna try to play this for you from memory. Here's a rule. I'm only gonna give it one shot. One shot. This is my moment. Uh, so, let's do it. Okay, like I said, one shot.
okay, whatever. That, uh, it came how it came. And it only took one take that time, which is amazing. So now I can do other stuff. Uh, alright, let's take a little bit of a break, because I've been practicing for quite a while now. Ooh, ow. Just broke my wrist. Oh, there's the other one. <sighs> let's go to the computer. So we'll, we'll go ahead and jump back into this. Um, yeah, let's do it. Kyle. Woo, he's got an arm on him. Did you see that? The opponents declare, having knocked up the bulls. The opponents declare. This is uh, the BBC for sure. But here comes Green, and everyone is confident he can bear Captain's innings. Last man in, and everything depends on him. 36 runs scored, 75 wow. needed to win. Oh dear. This is a sad day for English cricket. <laughs> Julian Bream, go to the floor in your apartment now. You performed bad. There's no reason why an international virtuoso shouldn't live in the country, providing he plans his touring very carefully. In fact, I plan my tours around the pruning and indeed the fresh vegetables. <laughs> Terrific. Wow, just a charmed life for Julian Bream. Not bad. I plan my uh, practicing around the pruning and harvest of my basil plant. That's not going so well, though, so it leaves me a lot of time to practice. God, he is tearing that targa up. The plucked instruments, most of them, if not all, come from the east. And perhaps it's to do with Eastern mysticism and religious experience. Yeah, because no other, like, direction on Earth has, like, religious experience and mysticism. Sound has a remarkable quality. I mean, there are only so many different kinds of instruments you can have. And, like, it's just probability, I guess, that wherever you're from happens to have an instrument. Like, there's wind instruments. Like, wh why do you think wind instruments came about wherever they came about? I, you get what I'm saying. The actual pluck itself is the apex of the sound. And I do agree with that. It is the superior sound. After it dies. And if you are playing, say, a phrase of six or seven notes, you are dealing, really, with six or seven births and six or seven deaths. We hate death, and we don't know how to deal with it. So in fact, we sustain our lives as long as possible. That's right, when you're playing a wind instrument, you're just fighting nature. Every note I play in that Bach, I am creating a life and letting it die. It's just a massacre when I play it. Say, me one of those clunk on those hands could put an end to his career for good. Naturally, it's a terrific risk, but I feel that I must live. I must do things with my hands. After all, my... Idle hands are the devil's playthings. That's what my grandma always said. I like to think in some sense I'm a practical person. I believe that to some... <laughs> in some sense, I'm practically a person. I believe that to some extent one's in the lap of the gods. Woo! Like a dream. Whole tone. Oh, we're in the practice dungeon, I think. Maybe. Man, Julian Bream just does whatever the hell he wants, doesn't he? He's uh, playing Django Reinhardt for a bunch of people. That's the life. Probably based around his plants growing and stuff. Jeez. of the lute to the other instruments is very interesting. It never has the tune, but it has so much of the texture. Also, it gives so much of the pace. Believe it or not, all the divisions and fast-running passages in my lute part are all written down. Many people think I make them up, but these Elizabethan players must have been every bit as good as myself possibly a bit better. Imagine if he was making that up. That'd be so hilarious. Like, Julian, stop shredding over my galliard. What are you doing? <laughs> he has his car salesman attire on again. I love when Julian's wearing all that. He just needs, like, a gold chain or something. It's not a bad performance at all. It's such a wonderful sound, isn't it? I'm afraid to say so when the loop comes in. <laughs> 
You arrogant son of a gun, Julian. It's really... That wasn't a bad performance at all. Especially when I came in and, like, played through the whole thing and shredded. That was really good. Cut. To use television magic, Julian Bream was able to partner himself in a duet for two lutes by John Dowland. Julian, you've gone too far, man. What is this? The original Jacob Coyer. Look at him. Julian Bream plays with himself on live TV. Is that the title? I don't know. I love how he's looking Another at himself. Another visitor to the country was his old friend John Williams. As John Williams once Dude, recalled, ping pong masters. Oh my god. I hope this is like edited to make them look awesome at ping pong and just every time they miss. Let me see that again. John. Another visitor to the country was his old friend John Williams. I mean, they're, they're like, tearing it up like pros, if if that is actually one game with no misses. Dude, that's awesome. I don't think it was, though. I think that, that was some smart editing. I mean, they can already edit two breams in the same room, so why can't they edit, like, make them look better at ping pong? John Williams once recalled... <laughs> I love that. Gah! Is that the one that did it? The way we each play is as alike as chalk yeah. and cheese. We're not two musicians, we're an ensemble, and we create magic together. Very nice. Okay, well, I think that's a pretty good place to stop it. So after this, we're going to uh, be introduced to a new god, I suppose, John Williams. Maybe we'll watch something on him next. All right, I think it's about time for me to get into that Siciliana and Adagio. So let's go ahead and do it. Well, that was pretty fun, right? We got to see our friend Julian Bream play a funny British sport. All right, well, it's about time we go into the Adagio and the Siciliana. Yeah, so I'll just put some time in. We'll see where we end up. about done for this morning session so i'm just gonna play what i have of the adagio i did cover a little bit of new ground or at least i it might be new I, i'm sure i've done it before but it's the entire first page so i'm just gonna play a part of it and you know i'm just trying to make it like sound better in general too uh, the adagio is kind of a weird one so i'm just trying to like bring stuff out and like not scratch the notes like that it's hard going there All right, so I'm just gonna start here. This thing, I'm trying to get this to really come up. Because uh, when the violin played it in Xander's master class, it, it sounded so cool. I really love that part. And... Oops. All 
And now this is all the new measure here. So we have this weird chord. It's like a really, really bad measure 17. Four more like actual measures left in this. And then a fifth measure is just whole notes. All right, well, let's go ahead and wrap this one up. I think I'm about done for today. All right, so that was the morning session in the bag. Pretty good stuff. You know, it was a lot of just like memory work. We learned a little bit more about Julian Bream. Hope you enjoyed that. If you made it this far, like be sure to subscribe and all that stuff. I'll see you in like eight hours. See you tonight.